Welcome to our online community Good Friday service. We're so glad you've tuned in to come and join us as we venture together during this Good Friday. And I want to personally say thank you to each pastor and church leader who have made this possible. And so I want to give a shout out to each church that's been a part of this process. Floyd Church of God, Faith Wesleyan Church, Midland Missionary Church, Meridian Church of God, Mount Haley Church of God, Oil City Assembly of God, Glad Tidings, Nice Memorial, Wesley Chapel, and the Salvation Army. Again, thank you for all that have made this a possibility. Again, my name is Corey Chester, and I'm the pastor at Faith Wesleyan Church. And again, I would personally like to thank you for tuning in and being a part of our online Good Friday experience. I mean, we're, we're using technology. Uh, we're coming to you in a different way. Uh, it's not what we would like to do because we, we know we're in an empty place, these buildings, but we know the church is where we're at today. And so again, if you're tuning in for the first time ever, or you're checking out our community Good Friday service for the first time, we want to especially send out a, a strong, hey, we're welcome you gathered alongside with us today. Our hearts continue to build community and share God's love, even, like I said, when our physical churches are empty. Thanks again for worshiping with us this morning. We're so glad you've come. So please share, like, and maybe even start a watch party for this service for your friends and family to, to partake in. So with that being partaking in, we also want you to know that we're going to take communion together at the end of the service. So hey, if you have some crackers, some bread, some juice, or something like a juice that you can go grab, go grab it now. Be prepared. So make sure you have enough for your whole family. And grab it, come back, sit down, and we'll worship together today. So don't forget to grab that. But first, let me pray with you. Lord God, may we be grateful for our lot and compassionate toward all those who are suffering every kind of distress at this difficult time. May we hold back nothing and hasten to be the ministers of prayer and mercy, like the disciples of him who went about doing good in times of need. Amen. 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 Well, hey, Pastor David Ackerman, you're going to take this away now and you're going to lead some some songs. So, hey, let us go worship this, our Lord and Savior today and be blessed. Friends, on this Good Friday, we join together to praise Jesus for the sacrifice that he made on our behalf. Going to his death on the cross is what Good Friday is all about. So we'll sing a couple of songs today that celebrate that truth and its impact on our world and on our lives. The first song we'll sing is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, and we'll include the chorus, The Wonderful Cross, along with it. So let's sing in praise of our Lord together.
The next song we'll sing is an old hymn of the faith called At the Cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, there would the burden of my heart rolled away. Let's sing together. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he sacred head for someone such as I. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all that I have done he suffered on the tree amazing pity grace unknown and love beyond degree at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well might the sun in darkness hide, and shut his glories in. When Christ the great Redeemer died to set me free from sin. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of I give my 
itself away Tis all that I can do At the cross, at the cross Where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day At the cross, at the cross Where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for and surrendered Jesus to their will. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in, the, in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals. On one, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Well, I'm Pastor Kevin, and I want to thank you for being part of this community service. I hope you have something available that you can jot down a few words today. We celebrate Good Friday today. Some may ask, why do we call it Good Friday? This day over 2,000 years ago was not a good day for Jesus Christ. Jesus had been falsely accused of crimes against God. Jesus was beaten more than once. Jesus was also whipped and ridiculed and made fun of by the Roman soldiers. Jesus was condemned to death and was made to carry a cross up a hill to be crucified. But because Jesus had been beaten and whipped, he was too weak to carry the cross all the way up the hill to Golgotha. The Roman soldiers pulled a man out of the crowd and they had him carry the cross the rest of the way for Jesus. After they got on the top of the hill on Golgotha, they laid the cross down and laid Jesus on the cross. And they put nails in his hands and put nails in his feet. They nailed him to that cross. And after they nailed him to the cross, they took the cross and they stood it up and plopped it in a hole. They stood the cross up so all could see Jesus. He died about 3 o'clock in the afternoon that day. See, Good Friday was not that good of a day for Jesus. So, why do we call it Good Friday? You know, that's a great question. It is Good Friday because of what Jesus did that day. What Jesus did that day impacts our world still today. See, everyone can call Good Friday good for these facts. These facts are all part of God's plan to bring people back to Him. Good Friday is God's love in action. And these facts are why Good Friday is good. This first fact is willing. You write down that word, willing. See, Jesus was willing to go to the cross. We see in Matthew 26, verses 47 through 56, Jesus being arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus did not run or hide. He didn't try to get away. In fact, Jesus just stood there, and as they came, he asked them, Why did you come? 
Jesus voluntarily gave himself up, even though he could have called 12 legions of angels to protect him. We see in Matthew 26, 53, reading out a New Living Translation says this, Don't you realize I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us, and he would send them instantly. See, Jesus' love, you, love for you is so great. He didn't call for those angels. Jesus could have appealed to Pilate. Jesus could have pled his case, but he didn't. Even when Pilate asked, Jesus remained silent. Why was Jesus so willing? Because of his love for you. Jesus was innocent, yet he did not put up a fuss or a fight over it. Jesus was willing. The second fact is sacrifice. Write down that word, sacrifice. See, Jesus sacrificed himself for you and for me. Jesus shed his blood on that cross so you don't have to. See, Jesus took your punishment for your crimes, your sins that you committed against God and against others. Many people don't realize the sacrifice Jesus made for them and how special his sacrifice really is. Sometimes it's hard to grasp just what Jesus did and how important it is for us today. C.S. Lewis tries to show us the, important and power of, the importance and power of true sacrifice through his writings. In his book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, he illustrates this pretty well. If you have read the book or have seen the movies, The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, hit the like button down below. In the movie Narnia, The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, we find Edmund betraying Narnia and his siblings. When Edmund realizes what he has done, he escapes from the White Witch and he asks for forgiveness from Aslan, the lion. And while the Narnians were in camp to defend Narnia against the White Witch and her army, her evil army, the White Witch comes into camp demanding them to turn over Edmund because he is a traitor. All traitors' blood belongs to her. And Edmund needs to be killed on the stone table. Aslan and the White Witch meet in private, and Aslan makes a deal with a White Witch to let himself be killed in place of Aslan or in place of Edmund. The White Witch and her followers celebrate as Aslan shows up to the stone table. Lucy and Susan, Edmund's sisters, followed Aslan to the stone table and watched from afar. As Aslan was humiliated and killed, Aslan did not put up a fight or try to get away. He laid there as he tied him up and cut his mane. They pulled him up on the table. Then the white witch took the knife and killed him. The white witch and her evil followers celebrated, thinking they had won because they had killed Aslan. After they left, Lucy and Susan ran down to Aslan. They cried and sat with him for a while. And as the girls were leaving, they heard a great noise and turned around and saw that the stone table broken and Aslan gone. And then Aslan comes walking toward them. And the girls ask Aslan, what happened? Aslan replied, if the witch knew the true meaning of sacrifice, she might have interpreted the deep magic differently. That when a willing victim who has committed no treachery is killed in his traitor's stead, the stone tablet will crack. Even death itself will turn backwards. That's what Jesus did. He willingly let himself be killed in your place for your treachery and for my treachery. When Aslan was killed, he came back to life and he broke the witch's power. The same is for Jesus. When he, was will when he willingly went to the cross, 
He sacrificed, he sacrificed himself. He broke Satan's grip on this world and on your life. Jesus was a perfect sacrifice. The third fact is life. Write down that word life. John 3, 16 in Luke Living Translation says it this way. For God loved the world so much, he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What do you think of when you hear this verse? What word describes your feeling when you hear this verse? God's love for you is so great. He sacrificed his son so you can find life. Good Friday happened so that you could live. On that cross over 2,000 years ago, Jesus took your sins on himself. So you could believe in him. So you could be forgiven and so you could have life. Remember, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And that's in Romans 6.23. See, we are all condemned to death. But because of Good Friday, we now can have life. You are no longer condemned to death because Jesus paid the price. When you're called to stand before God, Satan will be your prosecuting attorney. He will accuse you and demand you to be sent to hell. He will bring up all the things that you've ever done in your life, demanding that you pay that price, demanding you be sent to hell. And you yourself will not be able to defend yourself because there's nothing you can say. But then Jesus, your defense attorney, shows up. He comes forward and he defends you. And he starts stating that he paid the price. There is nothing to hold against you. Jesus will say, I prepared a place for him. And Satan has no right to him. Then Jesus will tell God to check the book of life. And see if their name is not written in it. And when God looks into the book of life and he sees your name there, he will say not guilty. See, Jesus died so you can have life. So your name can re be recorded in the book of life. Jesus gives you life. Good Friday is a great day. As we celebrate it, this day is a great reminder of the great love God has for this world. This day is a great reminder of Jesus' great love for you. Remember, Jesus was willing. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. And Jesus gives life. These three facts makes Good Friday a good day. On this day, some 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the ultimate price for your and my sins. This was done out of love for you and out of God's plan to, to bring people back to him. Adam and Eve disobedience separated us from God. Jesus' obedience brings us back to God. See, now we know that Good Friday is good. So how do we respond? Jesus tells us to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Turn from your old ways and follow him. Believe in Jesus and receive the free gift of God. Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Jesus went to the cross for you. Don't turn away from him. Don't waste what Jesus did for you. Believe in him and receive God's gift for you and follow Jesus the rest of your days. Have your name written in the book of life. Let Good Friday be great in your life. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for your gift of Jesus Christ to us. We thank you, Jesus, for being willing to be our sacrifice. Lord, we thank you for the life that you give us. 
Your great love has impacted our lives and our world. We celebrate Good Friday today, realizing how much you care and love each one of us. Jesus, thank you for taking our sins on yourself so that we can be forgiven. Lord, I pray for those right now who are seeking you, those who are believing you in the first time, that you will lift them up in your hands and let them feel the burdens in their life being lifted from them right now. Lord, help them to follow you the rest of their days. And Lord, be with the believers. Help us to never take for granted what you have done in our lives. Help us to follow you to the end of our days. And Lord, thank you for being willing to bring us back into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have just believed in Jesus for the first time today, please leave a comment and someone will get with you and pray with you. If you need to talk with someone about Jesus or need prayer, please leave a comment. Now I turn the service over to Pastor Jeremy. Hello friends, I'm Pastor Jeremy with Oil City of Simlite God, and I'm here today to share communion with you. And I'd like to read from Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 14. When the hour had come, he sat down with the twelve apostles. Then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For to you I say, I will no longer eat of it until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He then took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And so now I would ask that you take your piece of bread in your cup. And let's give thanks for what the Lord has done. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for your body being shed and broken. Let's receive the bread. And as you hold the cup in your hand, let's thank God for his sacrifice, for his shed blood on Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Today, as we receive communion, we look to the past, but we also look to the future. We look to what he's done and we remember his sacrifice. But we also look to the future and we celebrate his coming. And so today, let's thank him for what he is doing. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your promises fulfilled and for your promises to come. Lord, be with us. And I pray that you be with each one as they go their separate ways. Amen. Friends, we want to say thank you for, for joining us today in this Good Friday service. We know it's a little different given the circumstances. We encourage you right now to like this video. Leave a comment below of what church you attend. And then also, would you share it with your friends and family? Thank you so much for joining us. God bless. Have a wonderful Good Friday and a wonderful Easter.